My name is Ron Wilstein, and I'm a broker at Keller Williams Luxury Properties in Park City, Utah. Today we're going to talk about the Park City real estate market and specifically how COVID-19 has changed things. To do this, I want, I've gathered together four experts to talk about the impact of the coronavirus on Park City's real estate market. We're going to do this within the context of what I like to call a roundtable discussion where each person can share their thoughts, their agreements or disagreements. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about four things. Number one, what's it like to live in Park City during a pandemic? Next, we're going to talk about how has the Park City real estate market changed? Thirdly, we'll look at listing activity both before and after COVID-19. And fourth, we're going to look at what it's like to work with buyers in this marketplace. I've gathered together four experts in the field. One is Dean DeLeon. He's a member of my team who specializes working with buyers. Jeremy Wilstein is also going to be here and he too specializes with buyers looking to purchase property in Park City. Then Doug Olmsted has joined my team and he's going to discuss things from the seller's point of view and then I'm going to be the fourth presenter to round off the group. Living in Park City during a pandemic. Hey guys, good to see all of you. How you doing? Good, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you, Dad. Hey. This is the new reality. We see each other via Zoom calls instead of in person. <laughs> good to see that's, you guys. Yeah, that's right. We are uh, social distancing. Unlike our regular webinars where we're shoulder to shoulder, we are now keeping our distance from each other. Well, we're glad for our listening audience that you're joining us. We're doing a round table. We've done these in the past, but the last time we did them, we were sitting around a round table. <laughs> Not this time. We got our social distancing, and we got a couple of topics we're going to talk about here. Uh, but why don't we just kind of catch up a little bit on how is it living in Park City during a pandemic? It's kind of a little bit difficult to tell this time of the year now that the resorts are closed and would have otherwise been closed and we would have been in a mud season uh, so the town would have been a little slower right now anyhow but prior to when mud season typically would have been it was odd driving through town not seeing any cars not being able to go out to dinner main streets empty um uh, we kept getting a little bit of snow, which is a little aggravating with the ski resorts not being able to, uh, or not being open, being able to go up there and take advantage of the snow that we were getting. Um, but like anywhere else, we've got to practice our social distancing so we can get rid of the, get rid of this thing to the best of our abilities. Nice. Yeah, I've, uh, you know, I grew up here, same with Dean, and <clears throat> since I was two, three years old, and it was kind of like a blast to the past here with this uh, this mm -hmm. COVID and the town being shut down. It was kind of like it was growing up here. So, uh, you know, I went out Friday night at about 9.30, 10 o'clock at night, and I went for a run and ran straight down Main Street, and there was one car parked on it. And then I just ran down Park Avenue, and there was no cars, and it was it was kind of nice, but uh, yeah, it is, it is different. Now the temperatures are getting nice. Everybody's getting out on their bikes and the hiking trails. Uh, but it was, yeah, it's kind of interesting there for a little bit. Very nice. Yeah. It's uh, I haven't been here my whole life, but I have been in Park City 25 years and uh, you're right, Jeremy, just the town feels about like it did back then pretty quiet. So, you know, I'm a cyclist. Uh, so it's been, a delightful lack of road traffic for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The the roads are so so uh, empty. I will say that during this past week, we're starting to see more people there. It's gotten warmer, mm -hmm. and it's nice to see the the bikers and the hikers are out on the trails. and And so I think we can keep our social distance while doing that. Um, but or there was a time that everything in Park City was a ghost town and. Uh, we can go to the grocery stores. We have a lot of freedom that a lot of places didn't have. Um, cooking at home, but kind of splitting our time up, going out to the restaurants that are offering curbside pickup just to, just to help those guys out and for a little variety. Um, so that's, that's been good, and that's actually been pretty efficient. You call it in or you drive up, call it in, and they bring it right out to you, and uh, you go home and eat it. <laughs> it's a different lifestyle. I think I get to uh, 
the store or Walmart or whatever, maybe once a week, otherwise hanging in, but doing lots of walks around the neighborhood or on the trails. Park City transition, like Dean said, uh, mud season has uh, got filled up with the pandemic and everything stopped. So anyway, that's, that's a little bit of an intro to see catching up with each other. I, I can tell with all of us, including Doug, that everyone's hair has grown. <laughs> and, uh, and Doug's the one who keeps it tightest, or at least his wife does. <laughs> this is my wife's uh, uh, haircut she did for me, for sure. But looking forward to Friday. Hopefully the, um, the, sal the salons do start opening and actually go see the, the barber. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right, well, let's go into some of our topics here. How has the Park City real estate market changed? We can go anywhere with this. Um, there's a starting point, maybe comparing how it make a comment or two in our discussion. And this is really just a discussion that we're recording on uh, how it was before COVID-19 versus how it is now and, and just what you're encountering and any market stats, anything you want to talk about. Um, yeah, I'll start off. I'm, you know, the biggest difference is, you know, usually during this time, because it is shoulder season, mud season, we're in between, you know, the end of the ski season and summer, it's usually a really easy time to get buyers into properties because, um, especially second homes or vacation properties, because nobody's really here. Um, and usually it's quite easy to get people into primary residence properties. Um, but it's been a little different this time. I have had to show schedule showings and the homes that are primary residents in it. Some haven't let us in. Some have done FaceTime video conferencing from the driveway because um, they're not comfortable letting somebody into the home. And other people are totally fine with having buyers come in, you know, wearing gloves and masks and not touching anything. Um, so it's, it's been an interesting shift, but um, you know, things have slowed down, but there still are buyers coming to town and coming to look at real estate. And frankly, uh, there's been some really high end properties go under contract in the last couple of weeks. So I think people are getting a little more comfortable um, as opposed to, you know, just a couple of weeks after the pandemic hit. So um, yeah, it's, it seems to be still pretty good activity given the global, global market. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would agree with what Jeremy said. I'd say uh, when the whole pandemic started and they started putting people on stay-at-home orders or even before that, around mid-March, uh, you saw a lot of people backing off uh, their searches. I was working with clients uh, that decided not to purchase at that point in time. They wanted to see what was going to happen. Uh, most of those clients have come back around and gotten more serious about their search. We're not going into properties uh, necessarily, but I am able to access properties, get good videos, uh, you know, put uh, a couple of properties under contract in this time. Uh, but it seems like still a lot of buyers are sitting, uh, doing a lot of browsing. Everybody's at home, so they're doing a lot of browsing on the websites and whatnot. Uh, but it seems like people are waiting to get back in. It's not like it's not like a fear of purchasing. It's when can I purchase? Uh, so I think uh, once we start uh, lifting the stay-at-home orders, and we're going to get a little bit more activity, people are going to feel more comfortable, uh, and we're going to see it pick back up because it seems uh, to me like the people haven't completely disappeared or the buyers haven't completely disappeared. Uh, they're just sitting and waiting to pounce on it. Uh, which, you know, hopefully that's the outcome and people do come back around. But uh, I, there's still the activity. There's still the questions. There's still the inquiries. I still get feedback. People want to purchase a property, uh, just not right now. Have the, have the lower interest rates played into their decision? Are they talking about that at all or, or no impact? Yeah, the lower interest rates are certainly enticing to a lot of people. There's a couple other things. Uh, going on with that. The, it's taking a little bit longer because so many people are uh, getting loans, but more more so because so many people are refinancing with the low interest rates. So the loans are taking a little bit longer. Although in speaking with a couple of local lenders here, uh, they are still able to knock them out in 30 days, give it 45 days, and they strive to just still do it in 30 days. Uh, 
Uh, but it, we like to set it up with an offer a little bit more time just to give a little cushion just in case something happens that's un, uh, unexpected, such as this entire pandemic. Nice. You know, more from a listing perspective is the marketing of homes. Um, like you said, Dean, we've seen a lot of people uh, browsing online. So I think that uh, our online activity has been about the highest it's probably ever been. Um, but, you know, uh, for single family homes, we've still seen a good continuance of activity. Um, people still need a roof over their heads. So while it may have slowed slightly for second homes or investment properties, uh, Ron and I on the listing side have still seen great activity as far as physical showings and virtual showings um, for our listings as well. So it hasn't totally slowed. Yeah, I think the, you know, before the pandemic, we were talking to a lot of sellers who were thinking about selling. And, you know, when you're transitioning from the ski season into the uh, home buying season, the spring and summer months, people are gathering information well in advance. We had some sellers who were ready to put their property on the market right away uh, and did so. We had others who said, I, I think I want to wait a little bit. I think they were trying to process the whole idea of having people go through their homes, particularly some of our older homeowners in a little higher risk categories were understandably a little more apprehensive. And then others who were a little apprehensive got over it and you know, felt comfortable about the whole process. One of our later questions we're gonna talk about is how you go showing properties and, and just the safety put in place so that uh, whether you're a buyer or seller, you know what's going on in the marketplace, so you don't have to worry about these things. But um, yeah, people, we've never gone through a pandemic. You know, what happens during a pandemic? How do you strategize from a negotiating point of view, whether you're a buyer or seller? Are there better deals because sellers have to sell during a pandemic, or do they really need to? We'll, we'll get to those topics, but um, that, that information is not only available now, but it's quickly changing. Uh, some of the sellers we've been talking about had a totally different story and a worldview a week ago compared to what I talked to yesterday. So it definitely is a moving target. Um, any other thoughts before we move on to uh, talking about listing activity and showings and stuff? Uh, well, you, met, you mentioned uh, getting good deals uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, so I think maybe that would be important for us to touch on. Uh, I do think that there, there are good deals out there because everybody's going to have a different view on what the ultimate outcome is going to be. So I do believe that there are sellers out there that will come down on price uh, from what it otherwise would have sold at or what they otherwise would have uh, come down to due to the fact of the uncertainty of what our future holds. Now, I'm not saying that there's a bunch of signs pointing towards the market dropping. Uh, I'm just saying that there is certain, there's been a shift and some people aren't sure and there's sellers out there that do want to sell, don't want to get caught with the listing. So they are willing to make an adjustment and offer their property at a discount. Uh, we certainly are seeing that there are sellers that are not uh, and prices are maintaining and they, um, uh, it's not affecting them at all or their willingness to come down in price. Uh, but I think they are out there. And for buyers, I mean, uh, there's only one way to figure that out, and that's submitting an offer on a property at a certain price that uh, you and your agent uh, discuss uh, in a certain strategy. Uh, but some, some sellers are simply just going to say, no, that's out of this world uh, still, still to this day. But that's just something that you have to fill out. And that's a case-by-case case case uh, scenario it's not going to be across the board but I will know I mean in, in April this year we've seen 56 uh, sold properties compared to 106 sold properties last year in the same time frame from April 1st to April 29th so there's certainly been a little bit of an adjustment as far as how many properties are are, are selling all right well, that's helpful information um, you know, I, I did a deal that's, or <laughs> we were doing a deal. One of them didn't make and one of them did make. Um, but both buyers were from New York City, living at the epicenter of the pandemic. And the one buyer who I was representing uh, already owns property here in Deer Valley, wanted to make this their home, retirement home. And 
it's quite a thing to go through the negotiations and the loan process and everything. It's in the midst of the COVID delays. Um, and, but they were 100% there. They went through, bought the property. They couldn't be happier. And uh, they see it as a long-term decision that they're going to enjoy for many, many years. The other transaction where I was representing a seller and the buyer being serviced by another agent was living in New York City, the epicenter, and got through all the details that are normal in the course of a transaction, but at the end, just was feeling nervous and wanted to delay the transaction um, for a month and a half, and the seller was given the opportunity to agree to do that. They took the position, no, we're not going to do it. If you either buy because you've done all your due diligence or move along and we'll sell it to someone else. And I gave some reasonable uh, cautions that we're in a pandemic, so it's unknown. And so kind of cut the cord there, that buyer went away and uh, Doug actually got on the phone, talked to a lot of people who had seen the property prior to that, brought one back, we're under contract again. So, you know, what's happening, you can see that there's being, you're being pulled and pushed as a buyer or a seller in a lot of directions, but we're still selling real estate in Park City. We're open for business and um, we're doing it differently, but we're, we're pretty busy. We're partway through our round table discussion. I'd like to pause and direct you to our website, buyparkcity.com. A lot of people like to go to this website to take advantage of three important opportunities either to set up a property search for properties that are of interest to you. Once you set it up, they come to you automatically by email. Or you can set up a market report of neighborhoods or condominium properties. This is particularly a good idea as the market is changing as a result of the pandemic. Or you can get an instant property update. I just want to quickly show you how to set up a market report. Your criteria can be anything that you want. You want to go to this button at the top market reports, and let me just demonstrate it on a live website. Here we are at buyparkcity.com. Go up to the pull-down menu at the top that says market reports and click on it. It will instantly take you to this form and you can choose locations of interest to you based upon the multiple listing service or you can go a little bit lower down and you can choose subdivisions and you can choose multiple subdivisions. Then you can set your criteria on homes, condos, or land, the price ranges you want. Just choose a pull-down menu and a price range. You can also identify number of bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, and other criteria. And then click on this button, go to market report. It will instantly open up a report and it starts out with active listings and then you can go down a little bit lower and it will pick up properties under contract. You can choose any property on the list, select it, it will open it up instantly and you'll see details about the property. Of course, pictures, details, and a description of the property and you can request information. You can do anything that you want. It provides you with instant information on the areas that are important to you. You can save the report by clicking this button, save report, give it a name, decide how often you want it to come to you by email, monthly, bi-weekly, weekly, never, whatever you want, you set it for, and it will come to you automatically. If you want to know so data in your neighborhood or your condominium property, click on this button, click here to receive so data. It will open up this very simple report. You fill it out, identify your neighborhood, your condos, whatever you want, hit submit, and we will provide you with the so data that you're requesting. It's really just that simple. Create your report now by going to buyparkcity.com. Listing activity before and after COVID-19. So let's shift and let's talk about listings a little bit. Listing activity, I touched on it a little bit. I'll flip this one over to Doug to start the conversation about, you know, what sellers are feeling, um, whether it's firm on their prices or willing, willing to make big price adjustments. We've seen both, haven't we, Doug? Well, we have, and like Dean said, you know, every person may have a different reason for selling, but, you know, I think, um, take a bigger perspective on this, you know, we, we all know what happened in 2008, that was a true housing and mortgage, you know, uh, crisis. So 
um, you know, this was never about housing. This is a health crisis. So if you take out the last um, recession from the housing market crisis, um, you know, during all other recessions, real estate values have not declined. Um, so I actually disagree with Dean a little bit. I think uh, we're going to get through this. I think we're going to get life moving sooner than later. And um, I don't think that real estate values are going to decline based on the historic data that I just mentioned. You know, I just think that uh, at least the advice that I'm trying to share with, with sellers is there's no right or wrong answer in this market. <clears throat> you have to do what you're most comfortable with. And if it's postponing selling because you just don't know what to do, then that's a totally valid position to take. If it's holding firm to a price, you know, I caution and I give advice that, you know, we just, if it doesn't work out, we don't know where the next buyer is coming from. But as I said, you know, this past week, one buyer went away and the other filled it. Doesn't always work that way, but that's what we're seeing. And, you know, what, what I'm seeing, and at least picking up on the news, is as the stock market improves, and who can figure out the stock market? It goes up, and there is not reasons for it to go up. But it goes up, and then people feel better, and then they feel like they should proceed with life, and that includes buying real estate. Historically, we also know that when the stock market goes down, for other reasons, not health-wise, like this pandemic, that a lot of people get nervous about the stock market and they want to invest in real estate because it's something they can use and touch versus, you know, look at a brokerage statement or watch online and see money go out of your IRA. So it's very interesting, the relationship between the stock market and the real estate market. Um, but it feels like to me, that as different parts of the country start to loosen up and open up, and there's obviously mixed views on whether it's too soon or not, we're gonna find out one way or another. I tend to think it's a little bit too soon myself, but people's confidence will go up, and for some people, the economics will go up that will help them to be involved in real estate. Park City is a unique real estate market. There's a lot of wealth here. There's a lot of people who have been, everyone's been impacted by COVID-19, but a lot of people can still buy and sell real estate and they're not impacted. They're not living paycheck to paycheck. And so we're not as impacted by that, either from the buying or the selling side. Would you agree? Uh, yeah, yeah I would, uh, I mean, uh, you're looking at uh, close to 50% of the sales in Park City are cash sales. Uh, it, a lot of people have the cash to purchase the properties. Therefore, they don't necessarily need the financing, even though the rates are better. Uh, but they feel more comfortable making the purchase and it, diversifying their portfolio. Like you said, when a stock market goes down, people, the real estate market, typically, even when it's going down, it's not going to drop as fast as the stock market does. Uh, so it's a little bit more secure an investment and put your money here. And then ultimately back to what Doug was saying earlier, historically real estate market has recovered from all recessions and is back and continues to appreciate historically uh, on a steady scale, uh, so it's a safer investment. So yeah, we, we do see a, a lot of that cash going from the stock, mar stock market into purchasing homes or investment properties. Yeah, and I think the, the stock market has gotten so volatile, it doesn't really seem like based on fundamentals, it's based on the news or what, you know, maybe the president said or what's the stimulus package or, you know, the stock market just seems like it's traded daily on news and fear or whatever it just doesn't seem like the fundamentals of the companies are being taken into, into account which may get taken into account but with real estate you're in there and you know you're going to own it for at least a couple of years and you're it's going to flatten out those big fluctuations in the volatility that we're seeing um in our in our stock market i mean <laughs> it's like the stock market goes down or up thousand points it's like not even that big of a deal anymore because of how volatile it's been and that's that's should be quite alarming i mean i think real estate's a much better investment in these in these times yep working with buyers in this market well let's, let's shift from let's shift to the buying side of things uh and, and dean and, and jeremy you guys specialize work with buyers uh doug and I also work with buyers too, but not as much. 
how is the process of showing properties going there these days? And I'm, I'm thinking in terms of, and Jeremy, you touched on it already, not only the scheduling of appointment, but just the comments buyers are making and maybe their predisposition, do they think they're going to get a better deal instantly because they're looking during a pandemic or, or are they not really factoring that in? Any, anything's up for grabs here. Um, the clients that I've been working with, it, it really hasn't, the pandemic's not really come up that much. They've been looking at Park City. They've owned property in Park City in the past. They love Park City and they want to get back here. Or they want to have their primary residence or a second home here. Um, you know, the hardcore investors in the Park City market that are looking for cash on cash return and, you know, cap rates and everything it's there's not as many of those deals here i always tell the really hardcore investors that are looking for you know cash return every month that you know, our, our market's more based on appreciation and the pleasure of using the property and coming to park city enjoying everything it has you know, we, we are a lifestyle here in park city so the, the, i haven't had as many of those people but i'm sure they're going to come and they're going to say, let's offer 30% off or 20% off or 10% off because that's when I started my career in 2009. That was the common place. Now, again, as we talked before, 2008, that was a mortgage and real estate crisis. This is a health crisis. This is a global crisis. So um, it's not just to one, one sector, the real estate market. So I do think it's going to flatten out and we're going to, we're going to keep moving up maybe at a slower pace, but you know, the last so many years have been really record breaking with appreciation. So it's okay if it slows down a little bit. Uh, yeah. I, so I agree with a little bit of that. I have worked with buyers that expect a discount because of what's happened in anticipation of the market dropping a little bit. Uh, and, and I have gotten a discount on, properties at least you know, there's no way to tell for sure if we would have gotten it uh, in, in a normal in normal market I, I couldn't tell you that because we didn't submit the offers in the normal market we submit them uh during the pandemic but we got we leveraged the pandemic saying we don't know what the outcome is going to be and that's what our, my buyers want to do and i think it worked uh so I, I, like i said before i think there's going to be sellers that that's going to work on it's un, we, we we've seen a drop in numbers and just, and I hate to disagree with everybody to an extent, but when we see when you see a drop in numbers of listings, you see a drop in number of sales, you see a drop in number of pendings. For every action, there's a reaction, right? Uh, so, I would expect prices to drop a little bit. I'm not going to say it's it's a, going to be a huge decline, but I do think that we see a little bit of a dip. Uh, and how fast that recovers and plateaus or continues to appreciate. I don't know what this ne next winter hold for us uh, as far as the ski season goes and traveling. Uh, with, with when, when, do, when will we have a vaccine? Is that when they're going to really tell people, okay, you can go out and travel, take your vacations, don't be cautious, you, you're vaccinated. I don't know when that's going to happen. We rely heavily on tourists here as we've seen during this pandemic. So... And working with buyers, I think me personally as a buyer's agent, I think it would be irresponsible not to bring bring up the pandemic and talk to them about that. Uh, first of all, I don't want to advise a, a client of mine uh, and tell them, well, I guarantee you this property is going to make as much money uh, off its rentals and investor as it has in the past or what these projections are showing us. I just don't feel comfortable doing that. So the conversation has to be had. Do I think it's going to recover quick? Yes, just because of what we're seeing. People are just waiting to pounce and purchase. Uh, but I also think we're going to see a little bit of a uh, something. I don't think it's just going to be business as normal once we go back. Sure. Sure. Yeah, no, you make great points with that, Dean. And I'll kind of parlay of my, my observations I've been seeing is we have a certain segment of buyers that are looking for a deal and they're gonna come in and offer and use the pandemic as a reason to get a better deal. And then we have a big portion of people that live in New York, live in Los Angeles, live in Chicago and say, hey, let's go to Park City and buy us a really nice house, 
So if this comes back in the winter, we're getting the heck out of the city and we're going to our place in Park City and that's what we're gonna do. And like two weeks ago, I saw three big parcels of land on Old Ranch Road priced at two million, two and a half and four million go under contract in one week. And that's for land. And usually land is the one that kind of falls off when there's some uncertainty. I couldn't believe it. But I think there's a big portion of people that are saying, hey, let's get ready if this comes back. I don't care if we overpay it for it. I don't care if the market drops 5%. It's about our life. Like we want our health. We want to get out of the city. And I think that's going to be a big shift of city folk. Hey, let's get somewhere where there's not so many people and you know, Park City's a good option in the surrounding areas. And Jeremy, that's interesting. I was actually on one of these Zoom calls with many, many real estate agents across all of Park City yesterday. And um, that's been a theme that many other people have also been seeing. They call them the urbanites or, uh, you know, from Chicago and New York and whatnot are looking to uh, get a home in mountain environments. And, and uh, globally, search uh, engines have the, the term mountain luxury or mountain homes have increased exponentially as well. So yeah, I think you're right on, on key with that one. You know, they used to say, I've been here 33 years, the agents used to say of places like Chicago or LA or New York or just big cities elsewhere, when somebody sneezes there, the realtors in Park City hand them a Kleenex. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why is because what happens in their home base, wherever it is, has an impact on little old Park City because it's been the place that so many people historically have either come on vacations, chosen as their second homes, chosen to retire. And so while real estate is always local and what may be happening in Texas or New York, or California, or whatever, they have no relationship with Park City. These different things that happen to them, the things that make them nervous historically um, often cause them to move to Park City. I mean, we, I remember, you know, Jeremy was two years old when we moved here, but from LA, there were the freeway shootings, if the audience listening to this remembers this stuff, free, freeway shootings, uh, it was just crazy. You couldn't, you couldn't send your kids to school. And then it just kept getting worse. Everybody thought I was nuts to move to Park City. And then they were envious that I did once I had a couple of years later. So there, we do have a unique relationship there. There's also the relationship that I see between a marketplace where there's reasonable hesitation by sellers and buyers to some degree, but that hesitation is creating an alternative balance. And what I mean by that is we would normally go into the home selling season right now, in between the school year, even though school's out now, early of course, um, and we would see a lot of activity. There would be more homes that would come on the market. There would be more buyers coming for those homes. So there would be a balance happening, even though there'd be a change of inventory. In this sense, the same is true that if there's a change of inventory by some sellers who, for whatever reason, are a little reluctant to be on the market, but there's fewer buyers also. And so in that sense, there's a balance here or if the buyers come out of it sooner because they feel they're the ones that are necessary to make a deal, the listings can be there, but if nobody wants to buy them, they don't get sold. The buyers get more comfortable, they step forward to make the deal. And if the sellers are still a portion of them reluctant to be on the market, now it's a limited inventory market, again, favors the seller. So it really bounces around between favoring the buyer, favoring the seller, ultimately, no deal happens unless it makes sense to a buyer and a seller, but um, there's not a rule of thumb here. Even though we'll watch the pandemic, we'll watch the recovery, we'll watch if there's a second wave, we'll watch what the stock market does. We'll watch all the, all the tragic things that are gonna happen and there will be businesses that fail and stuff like that, but, but we'll move on and, and people will make Park City their home and their refuge and so, we're going to keep busy, but we're going to do it different. <laughs> Can't do it the same way. We weren't always in these boxes. <laughs> I think this is a nice round table. Anybody have any closing comments before we wrap it up here? You know, I would say, you know, feel free to reach out to us. You know, we don't have 
all the answers. I mean, this is an unprecedented event. We're using what we're feeling around town, other professional colleagues of ours, the experience they're having, similar conversations like that are going on right now to just try to get a feel for what's happening. I mean, you say nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody knows what's going to happen if the market's going to fall a little bit or if it's going to stay put or if it's going to go up. However, I just want you to think about, especially if you're in some of these big cities, think about your health, think about the wellness, think about lifestyle. And if Park City is a place that can do those things for you, then you know you might want to weigh out the risk of, you know, maybe if the market drops a little bit first, maybe I'm in a better place if this flares up again in the winter. So, you know, just keep that in mind. You know, we all want to make money. We all want to make good investments. We also want to make good investments in ourselves, in our families, well-being, and our health. Not saying that part, it's not going to happen here, but it does allow you to spread out a little bit more, get out of the big cities. Yeah, I'd say uh, weather's getting nice. Summer's coming. It's supposed to get close to 80 today here in Park City, I think. So that'll be nice. In the past couple of days, you know, I was out, got a little bit of a sunburn already on Sunday. Uh, so trails are opening, snow's melting. It's definitely a shift into summer. Uh, if we do get the stay at home order lifted Friday, which looks like it's happening for sure, right? We're going back to business as usual. I think there's going to be a lot of people that are jumping into it and we, we're going to be pretty busy. So I don't necessarily think we miss the main home selling season because that's coming up here in about a month, month and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'd be interesting to see. I think we get back on track here uh, and start selling some properties. And Jeremy, I do disagree with one thing you said. You said nobody has a crystal ball. I've watched many Ron Wilson webinars where he predicts the future and he's usually right. So <laughs> your father, I think, has a crystal ball. <laughs> nice nice I, i'll give you the 20 bucks later Dean. <laughs> yeah yeah got you what are you you're looking for a little raise or something aren't you <laughs> <laughs> any way you can get your money these days um, yeah you're really desperate <laughs> one of the things we're going to do i'll just wrap up and mention this is um since the market is changing so often we do our monthly webinars try to keep everyone informed especially if they don't live in park city what's happening here but uh, starting in May, we're going to be starting weekly podcasts on a variety of subjects and maybe even some of the recordings of what we're doing here on this roundtable might make their way there. Um, we just feel it's really important, especially if you don't live in Park City, that you know what's going on here, whether, whether you're just curious, whether you're trying to invest, whether you're just trying to make a good decision. Uh, we're going to do our best, the four of us, to keep you informed of of stuff and when things open up let you know so you can come up here and enjoy them and, and uh, it's going to be your lifeline especially if you're not here right now. Thank you for joining us on our roundtable discussion on Park City real estate and the COVID-19 pandemic. We want to keep you informed of changes as they seem to be happening weekly if not daily and to do so starting in May we're going to provide you with podcast updates. It's going to be the same presenters here and we'll have some guest speakers, but it's our way to keep you informed of changes in our marketplace, particularly those who don't live in Park City, so you know what's going on here. We also want to let you know that our team is still very active. We are open for business. We're here to help you in any way that we can.